Hey everyone, this is Roberto Blake and welcome to another Photoshop CC tutorial. In today's beauty retouching tutorial, we'll be using once again the photography work of John Covington. You can check out his work at jcov.net. Uh, in this tutorial today, what we'll be doing is we'll be focusing on color correction. Now, as you can see, I've already color corrected our model here. Uh, it's a great shot, but it just needed a little bit of work. Um, in a true color correction workflow, I would traditionally use Adobe Camera Raw but I'll be saving that tutorial for my Adobe Camera Raw series, which you can check out on this channel. So today we'll be working in Photoshop, assuming we only have to edit one photo instead of uh, multiple photos or a batch or what have you. Um, so we'll, it's fine for us to just do that in Photoshop. Uh, we're going to be using Photoshop CC, of course, but if you can follow this tutorial in most modern versions of Photoshop, since I won't be using CC exclusive features like the Camera Raw filter. So let's go ahead and just toggle off uh, my color correction here. You can see it's still a great photo, but it, it feels a little flat. Um, it doesn't have enough contrast, um, and there wasn't enough fill lighting in the photo, and we corrected a lot of that. And I'll show you how we did that and how we create a little more depth and the color casting that we wanted. Um, it wasn't very difficult. It just required um, a few adjustment layers and um, some masking. But I'm just going to... Um, go ahead and uh, get rid of these all together and we'll just start over from scratch so you can see how I did this. Now the first thing I did was I went to the curves and that's just my particular preference and it doesn't matter what order you do this in per se. Um, your layer stacking may um, you know be affected depending on what your photo is but I like to go ahead and adjust the curves and I do this by eye. It's more of an art than a science and you can look at the details of this in my curves adjustment tutorial but you can see that this dramatically improved our image and made it um, less flat and more contrasty right off the bat this is already a significant improvement to our um, photo already so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the color balance and I feel that there may be um, too much red just in um, the face of our model so I'm going to bring that down but I'm going to do it I'm going to take advantage of this mask I'm going to invert it using control I that's command I for you guys on the Mac and then I'm going to take a white brush I'm just gonna do it at a um, hundred percent here and I'm going to paint out the area here in the face just so that I can take some of that um, warmth out of it to match the rest of the skin tone in this image. And if I want to go back and if I want to warm the uh, skin tone of the overall body, I could just do more or less the opposite of what I'm doing here. if that's the look that I want. In this case, I just kind of wanted to cool her face down because the rest of the skin tone, um, you know, has that going on. So that's what I wanted to do here. And this might be a little much, so I'm just going to adjust my opacity a little bit for that effect on this mask so that she's not too pale. But you can see what a difference that made overall um, right then and there. So that's how I'm going to use color balance. Um, I recommend using that color balance um, to affect the skin tones and to do things like that. I still want a little bit more contrast to um, this image overall. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a levels adjustment layer. And you can do this, again, for what you feel your um, photo needs in terms of um, creating contrast values. In my case, I'm going to be adjusting the contrast of this image in a way that brings out um, some of the details of the hair and still um, keeps this image from feeling flat though. and make case that requires adjusting these sliders very subtly and very carefully. Because I want to bring out the details um, of the hair in the center, but I kind of want to um, darken the edges right around the hair over here 
so that if I want a mask, it'll just feel more easy and comfortable, especially if I'm going to be working on black. So that's what I've done here. So we've got that. Next, I'm going to move on to uh, one of the favorite things that I do, which is I use gradient maps, as you may be familiar with. And in most cases, I prefer to use um, my gradient maps with um, soft light. And I can use these to either um, do cast lighting on my images or to increase um, the contrast or affect the tonal range. And you can kind of just see that what this does is it makes it a little less flat. And again, you can do this for whatever you think your um, photo needs. You know, and in some cases you can do without it. It just really depends. Um, I think that this actually helps my image, so that's why I'm going to keep it there. Um, but now I'm going to do a gradient map for a little bit of color casting. And in this case, I'm going to use one of the uh, defaults because um, I just experienced that it'll work well on this particular image. I'm going to switch the blend mode to soft light. And I'm going to switch the opacity value to maybe 15%. And that just creates um, something that I like in the image and just gives it a style that I feel is okay. And then finally, I'm going to um, do brightness and contrast, but I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm actually going to um, probably reduce the brightness, increase the contrast, And then I'm going to use the mask, and I'm just going to paint out some areas that I want to keep bright, such as the eyes here, since I used it to um, reduce the overall brightness. So I'm just going to kind of paint some of those areas back in. Now the one thing I could do overall for this just as a final thing is um, I can use the curves and I can use the individual curve channels to affect the final look of the image overall. I can either, and again, how you want to do this is a matter of preference and a matter of what look you want to create. And again, you can combine this with masking and you can get all kinds of different scenarios out of this. I think that adjusting the blues very subtly like this is giving me the look that I really want and it's not feeling as red. Um, and again, you can use masking to um, really take this to a whole different dimension. Um, if I want just the red in the dress to pop a little more, um, you know, I can adjust these values and then I could go back and I could mask out some stuff with just the dress and you know that would really be something and you see that in another tutorial where I talk about changing the colors of clothing but as you can see this makes a world of difference in the final result of our image and I'm just going to um, dump all of my stuff into my group here and you can see the difference it makes we go from a flat image um, to a nice balanced image uh, matching skin tones and just something that really pops and we haven't even done a major retouching to the lips, the hair, any of that. We've just done a couple of simple color adjustments and some masking. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Purple Star, I hope this answered some of your questions and gave you a workflow that you can use in Photoshop. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other videos in this beauty retouching series that I'm doing with John Covington. And I'll see you guys on the next Photoshop CC tutorial video. Thanks for watching.